quick. I saw uh, floss of all things. I know this is interesting, but it's just how I see at times. Uh, it was on one of those little devices, though, like that you floss your teeth with, the little pre-set up ones. I use the old school, like big wrap string. I don't know what you guys do, but I, you know, I'll pull a big string out, wrap it around my fingers. Super old school. But it was the little device ones if that lands with somebody. But this shows me that I believe the Lord in the area of pursuing the holy is trying to bring cleanliness even to the deeper, more hidden places. And this is awesome because he gives a fresh grace for it. You know, it's one thing to brush your teeth, get the, the, the broad, obvious areas clean, but floss goes where you can't see. It's the hidden place of the heart. Psalm 24 is real clear. It says, who may ascend the hill of God? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. In the clean hands, I would look at as the brushing of the teeth, the broader outward deeds and things you touch and involve yourself with. In the body of Christ, typically we're good at that. And this isn't a condemning thing. This is just, again, to come higher in his grace and love there. But usually we're good at the outward things, being clean there. But the heart, the floss, the inner hidden places, I'm noticing he's calling to a higher standard right now. Does that make sense to you guys? And he's given a fresh grace for it, which you know what's most important about that? You can ascend the hill higher. Rich glory. You become like what you spend time with. His holiness exudes, possesses you. His voice becomes crystal clear. Intimacy, conviction gets sharp again. See, when the floss is lacked and those inner places are left alone, conviction gets dull. His voice gets more blurry. Destiny gets more broad and, and less concise and precise. And so a, a verse I've been really enjoying on this uh, that will hopefully help is 2 Timothy chapter 2. Starting like verse 19, maybe. So watch this. You, you don't have to turn there or you can. Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, we'll start in 19. But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription on it. He's really highlighting something here, and I love this. This inscription is written on basically a foundation stone. Number one is the most important stone there is. Like I told you guys, I used to build homes, and if you mess up the foundation, everything else is going to be off. It's the most important thing. It's the foundation. Then you start from there and, and build up. So God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription on it. The Lord knows those who are his, and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Isn't that amazing? He didn't say anything else on the foundation stone in this passage. But he highlights turning away from evil, which is something I want to emphasize here. I believe, of course, the purity of God is produced by his grace alone. We can't do it on our own. We know that. But also you see some crystal clear implications in Scripture where there's a yieldedness and a choosing on our part to turn away from evil. You guys know what I mean? There's a cooperation, and sometimes I see it get sloppy. Well, but the sovereignty of God, and I love him, and it'll be fine. But also, you know, Paul's crystal clear saying, look, those that know they're his, you've got to turn away from evil. Listen, Revelation 2, I love that they're talking about, no, uh, 12, I think, basically the spirit and the bride say come. In Revelation, the, the, Bible, the Bible says the, the spirit and the bride say come, but also the bride makes herself ready. Isn't that interesting? But I thought it was all God's grace. It is. You can't do it outside of his power and grace and empowerment to live pure. But also, there's a making yourself ready. There's a turning away from evil, a choosing. And um, so he goes on. I love this, this description. He says, in a wealthy home, Paul, some utensils are made of gold and silver. Some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, that's all he said. The only prerequisite was keeping yourself pure. There it is again, right? But I thought the Lord does, and it's all sovereign and supernatural. It is. But also there's a keeping yourself, there's a yielding, there's a choosing in this day. And that fine place of floss, I know it's an interesting uh, analogy. This is just how I saw it. But those hidden places, I'm telling you, the Lord right now believes breathing upon and saying, look, that may have been permissible in the past. But, you know, um, it's not beneficial anymore. Let's come higher. There's little foxes I'm looking at now, and I'm trying to take you higher, and they can't go here. There's things that we're still allowing that will not go to that, that highway of holiness in the next phase of destiny. 
and people want to catapult, step into that next launching place and be thrown, you know, thrust out into God's will, but they want to hang on to certain things. The Bible says, look, you throw off those sins that so easily entangle you. Yeah, that's another one for us to throw them off. But I thought God does. He does. He empowers you to throw them off. But a lot of times, his grace is so vibrant and pure and true and present. And then we just keep hanging on to them. His grace and empowerment to throw them off is there. That's the only way you can do it. But also, we just hang on to them. And it's like a chain and ball we keep dragging around. That's why we can't run the race at the pace we should. So anyway, I love this because he says, basically, fancy utensils, gold and silver, or sporks. This is the way I love to, to bring this analogy. You ever seen sporks, the cheap plastic Taco Bell, they bend, they're, that you just trash them when they're done. Basically, he's saying if you want to be a special utensil, ready for the master's use, if you keep reading, he says you've got to keep yourself pure. Isn't that awesome? And he's not pointing his finger, brow beating, condemning. He's saying, I love you, get it, the mistakes. Don't see them anymore as soon as you repent, like I told you guys earlier, but let's come higher now. Keep yourself pure. Those who know that the Lord's turn away from that which is uh, evil. He says, your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use for every good work. Isn't that awesome? So I want to encourage you guys, you know, as you go home and let the Lord in his love, he'll sit down there with you and say, yep, not a big fan of this. My Holy Spirit can't rest fully on this because he's holy. He's the Holy Spirit, pursuit of the holy. And if you want the Holy Spirit to come, he can come, but he, he can't come fully. Because I'm telling you, wh wh who was the main one that foran the way of Jesus Christ? John the Baptist, and his whole message was purity, repent. Because he was, he was making crooked paths straight. And the Lord's doing this uh, right now in this hour. So 